Okay, just an introduction until people come in. Today we're doing different like yogic routines and uh, everyday rituals. That means that we'll look at different breathing exercises and different techniques to ground down. Also some physical work. So I have my mat there, but today it will be quite um, grounding and it's a good routine to do before going to sleep or when you feel too agitated and you want to calm down, to ground down. Especially these days that the world is going crazy, it's good to know these little uh, rituals and these little yogic tricks that they use in India and that we can also use. Um, a disclaimer, this, most of these techniques are from uh, my Ayurvedic doctor. Ayurveda is medicine uh, that they use in India, so it's more preventing, pre preventing medicine and using different techniques that help you um, stay healthy rather than to cure something once it's done, once it's done, but of course that's also an option. Okay, so we'll start and then people can join in as we go. I will also upload this later on YouTube as long as I'm able to save it properly because sometimes Instagram is a bit weird, Zoom is a bit weird, but we're doing our best. Okay, so you want to find a comfortable seat. You can sit on a chair or you can sit on your mat on the ground. Pick up your chest, pull your shoulders back, your shoulder blades down the back and pick up the back of your scalp. We'll start with some lion's breaths. Lion's breaths are a great cleansing exercise. I do it when things are getting too much. It helps you to just rewind and to clear up what's going in your head. So you want to gaze at your nose tip. If it's too much, you can close your eyes. Otherwise, gaze at your nose tip, inhale and round your back, really round your back. And as you exhale, stick your tongue out and make a hissing sound, keep gazing at your nose. So try it, inhale and exhale. Two more times. Good. Close your uh, mouth, close your eyes. Sit still, sit tall. Alternate nostril breathing. So whenever you want to balance that your energy or how you're feeling, alternate nostril breathing is a great way to do that. Um, you want to place the index and middle fingers at your eyebrow center and then use the thumb against the right nostril and the ring finger against the left nostril as pincers. So first exhale through both nostrils. And then we'll block the right nostril and inhale through the left for five, four, three, two, and one. Switch sides, exhale through the right. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale right. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale left. Five, four, three, two, one. In left. Five, four, three, two, one, out, right. Five, four, three, two, one, in, right. Five, four, keep sitting up straight. One, out, left. Five, four, three, relax your eyebrows, keep going. In, left. Five, four, three, two, one, out, right. Five, four, three, two, one. In, right. Five, four, three, two, one. Out, left. Five, four, three, two. Two more rounds. In, left. Five, four. Keep sitting up straight. Pull the shoulders back. Shoulder blades down. Out, right. Five, four, three, two. One, in, right, five, four, three, relax the muscles of your face, out, left, five, four, three, two, 
one last round. Four, three, two, one, out, right, five, four, three, two, one, in, right, five, four, three, two, one, out, left, five, four, three, two, one, release the hands, sit up tall, breathe normally. Find a distance from your mind, find a distance from your breath, just watch what's happening. So pranayama is the manipulation, the restriction of our prana, our life force energy. Breath work is a great way to achieve that. And especially nowadays, as I said, that things are a bit crazy. It's important to be able to control your own energy, how you're feeling. So today we're going to use the breath to calm ourselves down, to ground ourselves down. Counting the breath is important. So now with the alternate nostril breathing, there was a, um, a steady count. Same inhale, same exhale. That's, that has an, a balancing effect. We want to now go to a more calming effect. They call it langana in Sanskrit. So balancing your energy, but calming it down, grounding it down. In order to do that, we will double the count of the exhale. So we'll bring our hands to our belly, we'll pull the chest up, pull the shoulders back, shoulder blades down, reach the back of the skull up, and make sure you're, we're breathing into the belly. Belly breathing has a good langana effect, calming effect, grounding yourself down. So breathe into the belly through the nose, and exhale, pull the belly back in. Have all your awareness at the belly. Keep your chest as immobile as possible, as motionless as possible, and focus on the breath on the belly. Inhale into the belly, front of the belly, sides of the belly, expand, and exhale, pull everything back in. We'll start counting up our breath. So we'll inhale for five and exhale for 10. So inhale five, four, three, two, one, exhale, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In, five, four, three, deep breath, one, out, 10, nine, eight, go slowly, go steady, five, four, three, two, one. In, five, four, three, two, fill the belly with air, out, five, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, four, three, two, relax the eyebrows, eight, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, keep sitting up straight, one, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last round, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and relax the breath, sit tall, notice how you're feeling,
hopefully the count of 10 was not too much for you if it was feel free to do it shorter 4 and 8 inhale for 4 and exhale for 8 but normally a count of 10 should be relaxing and comfortable if you want to make it longer you make it longer the idea is just to keep the ratio of 1 to 2 we will now do some Open up the chest and activate your sympathetic nervous system, whereas forward folds, they focus on the parasympathetic nervous system as you lengthen the lower back and the back of the neck, which is where we stimulate our parasympathetic nervous system, where we're able to calm down and chill. We have all these triggers in this world that make us panic, that make everything feel like too much, so it's important to be able to ground up. So you'll come to your mat or you just need one foot behind you so you can move a bit, but it will not be too an intense workout. We'll start with some sun salutations, but this will be L series, so calming sun salutations, quite simple sun salutations. You want to press down into the feet and reach the back of the scalp up. We want to activate the body first. We don't want to just release into the exercises and compromise our health, our body. So it's important to stay strong for the first part of the workout, let's say, so that then we can completely let go after having activated everything so that we already feel strong and we don't just collapse into our joints, into our lower back. So bring your hands to your lower belly Think of the sit bones coming in and lift up through the pelvic floor. Pull the lower belly in, lift up through the ribcage, pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down and reach the back of the scalp up. Exhale, press down into the feet, feel the natural lift of the pelvic floor and keep engaging the pelvic floor for this first part of the physical exercise. Pull the lower belly in, lift it up and hold everything up as you exhale. Inhale, lift, flow, lower floating ribs up and exhale. Keep everything in and up. Bring your arms by your sides and then inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale. Fold forward, interlace the fingers behind your back and reach your hands towards the front of your mat. Inhale, pick up the chest, bring your hands to the ground and bring the right foot back, right knee down, a low squat. And then as you exhale, you come forward again, press into the feet, interlace the fingers behind the back, bring chest to the legs. Press the feet down, keep the belly in and lift up. Press into the feet, reach the arms up. And exhale the arms by your sides. Okay, we'll try to do this with the same breath that we were doing before. So inhale for five, reach the arms up. Three, two, one. Exhale, fold. Nine, eight, seven. Interlace fingers behind the back. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And left foot back, inhale, five, four, three, pick up the chest, one, exhale, come forward, nine, eight, seven, interlace fingers behind the back, three, two, three, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, press feet down. Inhale, five, bring the arms up. Three, two, one, exhale, fold. Interlace fingers behind the back. Seven, six, five, four, exhale, slowly. Two, one, inhale, right foot back. Five, four, three, two, pick up the chest and exhale, feet, foot forward. Nine, eight. Seven, interlace fingers behind the back. Three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, rise up. Three, 
to reach up one exhale arms by your sides. Eight, seven, slow exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, arms up. Four, three, two, one. Exhale, fall over the legs. Nine, eight. Each leg fingers behind the back. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, left foot back. Five, four, three. Pick up chest. One, exhale, come forward, arms behind the back. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Press it down, inhale, come up. Four, three, reach up, up, and exhale, arms by your side. Press the feet down. We'll do one more on each side. One, press it down, inhale. Five, four, three, two, one. One, exhale, fold. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Bring all the way forward. One, inhale, right foot back. Three, two, pick up the chest and exhale, come forward again. Arms behind the back. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Bring all the way forward. Press foot down, inhale, come up. Keep the legs active. And exhale, arms by your side slowly. Exhaling slowly. Six, five, four, three, two. Last side. Inhale the arms up. Five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, fold, fold, fold forward. Eight, seven, six. All the way forward. Send the sit bones up. Two, one, inhale, left foot back. Four, three, two, and one, and exhale. Come forward, bring all the weight forward, press the feet up, arms behind the back. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Press the feet down, inhale, rise up. Five, three, two, one, exhale, arms by the sides. Nine. Eight, seven, keep pressing feet down, lift up the pelvic floor. Three, two, and one. Okay, open up the feet, keep distance apart. Reach up through the pelvic floor, reach back through the shoulders, through the shoulder blades, and then bring the chin in and start rounding your back. Think of the head moving towards the knees. So really round through the back. From there, we'll interlace opposite elbows, so we'll grab opposite elbows, and we'll use the weight of the arms to pull the head closer to the ground. Rock dough. Inhale through the nose, and open the mouth, and exhale out. Bring all the weight forward into the balls of the feet, and then again exhale through the mouth. Feel free to bend the knees depending on your hamstring flexibility. You want to feel like you're really pulling the belly in and reaching the belly towards the chest so that the head comes closer to the ground. Soften the shoulders, soften the shoulder blades, no pressure there. And then bend the knees. If they're not bent, in me and open up the feet a bit wider and sit into a low squat. So you want to place the hands on the ground to help you and pick up the chest. If you need to, you can lift the heels up. So we'll come to a low squat. You can lift the heels off the ground and come down, or you can bring the, the feet down. So carefully open up the knees. From here, we'll bring the chin in and again rest our weight forward. So bring, the, bring some weight onto the hands, bring some weight onto the head, hips. Keep the feet grounded, press down into the outer feet as well as into the inner feet. Feel a lift through the pelvic floor, feel the lower belly in, again inhaling through the nose, and open the mouth, exhale out. Do it two more times. So stay here, inhale through the nose, and exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose and exhale. 
exhale through the mouth. Okay, you'll bring your weight back so that you're able to sit down and then you can use your hands. So you can bring your hands back to help you or you can bring the arms forward as a counterweight and sit back. Bring your legs to the side and come to all fours. From all fours, we'll come into rabbit pose. So inversions are a great calming, have a great calming effect on the body when it comes to the energetic effects of poses. Of course, inversions might sound uh, like too much. That's why we'll do some simple inversions today. But if you have more advanced practice, things like headstand can be really grounding. But today we'll do rabbit pose. So we'll bring the crown of the head on the ground. And again, we'll round the back. Pull the shoulder blades away from the head and keep some weight onto the hands. Inhale through the nose. Keep the lower belly in. And exhale through the nose. Imagine that you're inhaling and exhaling through the crown of the head. We can keep some weight on the arms or press the head down strongly, depending on how it feels on your neck. So you want to have a long neck, and then keep some weight on the head. We'll find the count again. So inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. In five, four, three, two, one. Out ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In five, four, three. Relax the eyebrows. Relax the jaw. Out ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last one. In five, four. Keep rounding the back. Stay active. One out. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Press into the hands. Pull the belly in and push to carefully come up. Bring your knees together and sit onto the heels. Bring your arms by your sides and allow the forehead to come to the ground. Balasana, child's pose. We'll let go of the engagements in the deep core. So relax the pelvic floor as you inhale. Relax the belly as you exhale. Belly breathing again, so inhale into the belly, press the belly onto the thighs. And exhale, pull the shoulder blades towards the sit bones, reach the head further forward. Inhale into the belly for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, pull the belly back in, nine, eight, seven. Six, relax the eyebrows, relax the jaw. One, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your hands down, press onto the hands, and come out of it. So we'll Bring the legs up the wall as another option for an inversion. Um, if you don't have a wall available, then you can just keep the legs over the pelvis. You can use something to elevate your pelvis. So I actually use this like, big water bottle just to have something under my pelvis. You can use um, a blanket. What's important is just to elevate the pelvis slightly and what you want is the legs to go up the wall. So in order to do that, you want to sit next to the wall. So on the left there's your wall and then you bring some weight to the right. You lie down so that you turn your hips um, 
well, your butt to the wall, and then you turn with the feet so that you bring the feet up the wall. You sit on top of your blanket, of your block, of what you have there, and then you just allow your legs to rest on the wall. You can keep your legs straight, a slight bend is not a problem, again, it depends on your hamstrings. For starters, you want to keep your feet active so that you are able to stay aware of your pose. Keep the legs straight, so flex the front of the legs to stretch the back of the legs. Pull the belly in towards the chest and pull the shoulder blades down the back. Relax the eyebrows, relax the jaw. A nice feeling is to actually put some weight on top of the feet. So if you want to try it when you do it later, when you want to feel that you're grounding down, you can place a blanket, a folded blanket on top of the feet and you'll feel that pressure towards the ground. So this is a variation of the Parita Karani and the legs at the wall pose. Again, once you find those engagements, you want to fully relax. Release. My legs might bend slightly. The belly will flow freely. Relax your shoulder blades down the back. Relax the crown of the head away from the butt. So you can bring the chin in slightly. Relax the face. And again, focus on the belly breathing. Breathe into the belly for five, four, three. Allow the belly button to rise up. One, and exhale. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In into the belly. Four, three, two, three. Feel the belly with air and out. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Lengthen the breath, deep in the breath. In five, four, three, two, one. Out ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Keep breathing in this way. We'll stay here for another minute. It's good to be an in, in an inversion for a while so that we allow all of the fluids of the body, the blood, the lymphatic fluids to flow down from the feet. A lot of the time we'll feel some um, unease because there's just a lot on the feet. So once we allow the feet to come up, and we turn ourselves upside down, we allow our body to balance out in that way. And it's a great calming technique. Again, any of these exercises we did can be used isolated. They're not extreme exercises, so they don't need any real warm up. Just make sure that when you enter into any of these poses, any postures, you do it with engagement. And when you come out, you do it with engagement. And then in between, so once you're in the pose, first feel that you're stable, that you're steady, and then you can relax the body and focus on your breath. Do two more breaths. Allow the inhale to be half the count of the exhale. Allow your belly to expand with the inhale, the pelvic floor to relax with the inhale. And as you exhale, feel like you're coming closer and closer to the center of the earth. Feel the grounding effect. Now in order to come out of the wall, you start by bending the knees and you can press onto the wall so that you lift your hips and you remove anything that you had under the hips. 
it's ideal if you have something under the hips so that you have the hips elevated because that's kind of the de definition of the inversion where you have the hips over the head. But if your, feet, your hips are on the ground, that will still work. So once you find your hips on the ground, bend your knees, bring your knees close to the chest, pull the shoulder blades down the back and bring your forehead close to the knees. Inhale into the belly. And then exhale, relax your head down, keep your knees close to the chest. This is Apanasana, the uh, wind removing pose. Apana is the downward uh, wind of the body. In Ayurveda, in Indian philosophy, the body has different um, winds for the prana, the life force energy, to move in different waves and directions. So apana is the downward force and it's what we're going for now with all of these grounding techniques, this feeling of release, this feeling of grounding down and feeling that sense of security and trust, the sense of letting go and surrendering. So keep your knees close to the chest, keep your lower back close to the um, floor, Pull the shoulder blades down the back, reach the crown of the head away. Inhale into the belly. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Open up your arms into a T, and then we'll just walk our feet to the right. Maybe you can keep your feet against the wall. We want just a, a, a soft supine twist here. So pull the shoulder blades down the back and find a soft twist. Knees come to the right. Maybe they go all the way to the ground. Maybe they stay higher just like I'm doing. Inhale into the lower belly. And exhale, relax your face, relax your jaw and bring your head towards the left, the opposite side than the knees. Inhale, find a long spine. And open the mouth, exhale through the mouth. Walk your feet back to center, bring your knees back to the chest, and then exhale to the other side. Again, no need for the knees to come all the way down. Keep the shoulder blades down the back. Inhale. And exhale. And then bring your head to the right, complete the rotation of the spine. And exhale. Pull belly in, come back to center, hug your knees and bring your knees to your chest, your head to the knees. Exhale, come down, bring your arms overhead and twist to the left, allow your body to come down to the left, use your right hand to sit up. Okay, so these were different calming postures. I want to talk about hydrating the body because it's important for the body to stay hydrated, otherwise that's another reason why you'll feel a bit crazy these days, a bit dizzy. So drink a lot of water, basically. Um, a great drink that you can do in the evening is called golden milk. So I have it one or two hours before going to sleep. How you do it is... Um, you warm up some almond milk or any milk. I do almond milk. I actually use um, this almond milk that has extra calcium and it's actually a powder and you add hot water. So that helps because I don't have to warm up the milk, I can just warm up the water. Um, I do two tablespoons of this powder and then what you're supposed to have in golden milk is curcuma, so turmeric, so one uh, uh, spoonful of curcuma. Um, my doctor told me to also have some stevia in it so that it has that uh, sweet um, effect, which sweet is also grounding in uh, Ayurveda. Um, and then some black pepper. 
black pepper you uh, use a little um, grinder to have fresh uh, black pepper and some uh, nutmeg so this this is all you need with hot water or just hot milk you add these things ginger is sometimes recommended in, in golden milk but this is a great little trick when you need to ground down when you need to hydrate your body so curcuma hot milk um, some stevia black pepper and nutmeg so I have that in the evening so you can do this little routine that we did if you feel that you can't sleep so this practice can take like 5-10 minutes depending on which posture you choose if you do everything maybe it will be like we did a bit more and then you can have this drink and then you can do some seated practice so when it comes to the seated practice the breaths that we talked about before work, so lion's breath, alternate nostril breathing, and diaphragmatic breathing with a longer exhale. But something else that really works is one uh, nostril breaths. So like I was saying before, that the inhale is energizing and the exhale is grounding. When you inhale and exhale through the right nostril, that's energizing. And when you inhale and exhale through the left nostril, that's grounding. So in through right and out through right is called Surya Vedana. You're piercing the sun. And in through left, out through left is called Chandra Vedana. That's called um, piercing the moon. So if you want to try it, sit up tall again on your mat or on a chair. You can again bring index finger and middle finger on the eyebrow center. This is just a reminder to relax the eyebrows and a slight activation of the third eye. It's always good to stay clear, to stay um, with that clear vision. So activating your third eye, your eyebrow center. Press there lightly. And then we'll start with Surya Vedana which is the activating breath. So you block the left nostril and you inhale through the right and exhale through the right for a steady count. So exhale through both nostrils, block the left nostril and inhale through the right for five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, three, two. So just the right nostril, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, four, keep sitting up tall, out, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, so in and out through the right nostril, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, three, two, last round, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, three, two, one, release, breathe normally. So this is a good breath to activate the body, to pierce the sun in the body, to feel awake. It's a good practice to do before your mantras because you want to feel awake before you're doing your meditation. You don't want to be sleepy. So you can do, uh, like we did, a minute of this. Sit up tall, pull the shoulders back, pull the shoulder blades down. Now mantra practice is the practice of sound. You're focusing on the sound of different uh, Sanskrit phrases and words. Sanskrit is the Indian sacred language um, which basically has vibrational quality. That means that the sounds, the words were, choos were chosen because of their effect on the mind. Different vibrations have a different effect on your neural pathways in the brain. It's like listening to soft music compared to listening to like thunder and strong sounds. So sounds do have an effect on your uh, 
feel, what you're feeling, on how your brain is structured, and if you have consistent um, triggers, then you will be. It will affect how you're feeling, how you're thinking, and how you're acting. That's why a mantra practice, a strong practice, if you have consistent practice of repeating sounds, you affect how you're thinking. So we'll do the. Um, Gam mantra, Gam, Gam, G U M, Gam is uh, the Bija sound, so the seed sound for Ganesha. Ganesha is this deity and this feeling of removing obstacles from your life, so it's always a good idea to have uh, the Ganesha mantra in your practice to start your mantras. So, all you want to do for the next minute is to sit tall and focus on the sound of Gam. You can repeat it in your head as quickly or as slowly as you want with any pitch, with any melody that works for you. So it might sound like gum, 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 or gum, 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 gum. So sit up tall, relax your eyebrows, and focus on the sound of gum, gum, gum. Silently, just listen to it. Keep focusing on the sound. All that matters is that you focus on the sound. seconds, keep focusing on the sound of gum, gum. Good, and then come back to stillness, come back to silence, just watch for a second what, what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Having a mantra practice is powerful. I have my meditation teacher who gives me my mantras every 40 days. So it's important to have a consistent practice where every day you practice your mantras so that you have that effect. If you just listen to hard rock music once, it won't really affect you. But if all day, all night you're listening to hard rock music, it will affect how you're thinking and how you're feeling. In the same way, a, a mantra like GAM, which, is, which represents removing all obstacles in your life, feeling grounded, feeling that feeling of trust, it will affect your whole uh, perception and it will therefore affect how you live your life. After you do your mantras, maybe you have uh, more uh, sadhana, more seated practice to do. I, I have a course online if you want to look into that. Um, 40 days to clarity, so that 40 days you keep doing some sadhana, some seated work. After you do your seated work at night, then you can um, do some journaling. My routine at night is to um, basically do my mantras and then do some journaling. Well, first I have my golden milk, then I do my mantras, then I do some journaling. What I do with journaling is just five things, five appreciations for the day. So what do you appreciate? Five things that you appreciate uh, from what happened during the day. It puts you into that state of mind of appreciation so that you can go to bed with that feeling. And then uh, I write, when I wake up, I will feel. And that way I project into the next morning how I want to be feeling. So when I wake up, I will feel strong, grounded, um, loved, I will feel productive and uh, motivated to do all my work. If there's something specific going on the next day, then I can write that I will feel excited to talk to my uh, well, client, to my students, and to do a specific class. So you can be specific so that you get into that mindset and you go to bed. So now we'll come to um, our mat. We'll start with some uh, uh, Chandra Vedana. So you want to again sit up tall. 
you can do this after your uh, journaling if you don't feel that you're able to go to sleep yet so this is what we did before but through the left nostril so you'll place index and middle fingers to the eyebrow center, pick up the chest and block the right nostril. Keep the right nostril blocked and breathe through the left. You can first unblock, exhale through both nostrils. Block the right nostril, keep it blocked. Inhale through left for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale five, four, three, two, one. Inhale five, four, three, Two, one, exhale, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, keep sitting up tall, focus on the breath, two, one, out, five, four, three, two, one, in, five, four, three, two, relax the eyebrows, out, five, four, relax the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, one, in, five, four, three, two, one, out, five, four, so in and out through the left nostril, three more rounds, in, out, In, out, in, out, release your arm, sit up top. Going to that place where you're the observer, where you're watching what's happening is also a great way to feel more grounded because you don't allow your thoughts to take you away. You just watch them, you observe them and you allow them to just be, you learn more about who you are. So once you do your uh, moon piercing, you can lie on your bed and you can do belly breathing. So. Belly breathing can be done face up where you place your hands on the belly and you're actually feeling how the belly rises with every inhale and drops with every exhale. Try to make the exhale as long as possible. Inhale into the belly and exhale. Make the exhale as long as possible. Feel the belly button coming down. Keep breathing in this way. So it might be counterintuitive because deep breaths might feel like they're energizing the body. But as long as you're doing it down into your lower belly, this can be a very soothing exercise to do before you go to sleep. Well, on bed. So when you're in bed, if you do your belly breathing, before you know it, you'll be asleep. If lying face up does not work for you and you usually sleep face down or on your side, then that's perfectly fine. You can keep just the hand on the belly to focus your awareness there. And with time, you don't really need to place the palms on the belly because you know how to just send your breath all the way down into the belly. It's just that some people have learned throughout life to breathe into the chest and we want to reteach ourselves just like when we were babies to do deep diaphragmatic breathing all the way down into the lower belly rather than paradoxical breathing into the chest which in the end uh, agitates the body, wakes it up. Especially at night, it's important to have that ability to breathe all the way down into the lower belly. 
and exhale really slowly so that the exhale is longer you can again count so that the exhale is double the time of your inhale you can lie here for the next couple of minutes relax the eyebrows relax the jaw and breathe into the lower belly breathe and then breathe out and breathe really slowly feeling the grounding effect of the exercise relax your eyebrows relax your jaw relax your whole body and focus on the lower belly lifting up with the inhale and coming down ever so slowly with the exhale relax the body and focus on the breath safe in this moment, safe in this breath, safe in this body, safe on this earth. Now gently bring your awareness back to your physical body, back to the space occupied by your physical body. Start wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. And listening to your breath, start moving your head from side to side. Stretch the body, wake up the whole body, reach away through the arms and the legs. And then you can bring the knees in again, hug the knees, bring the head close to the knees, then rock from side to side, massage your lower back, your middle back, your upper back. And in any way that feels comfortable, you can come up to a seated position. So feel free to come to one side and use your hands to come up or in any other way find a seated position. So last week we talked about the morning routine. This week we talked about an evening routine. Of course the different exercises we talked about can be um, well, taken advantage of during the day so the morning routine exercises were a bit energizing so during the day if you feel sluggish if you feel you need to wake up you can use the morning techniques the evening techniques were calming and grounding so even during the day if you feel too stressed or agitated you can go back to these uh, techniques we did today these practices and this uh, breath next week the intention is to work with um, different kriyas, so cleansing exercises, cleansing practices, um, a little bit more of mantras, so mantras 
different sounds that help you be prosperous and healthy. So we'll work with the heart mantra to open up uh, our uh, ability to receive grace in life, to receive happiness, to receive love. Uh, we'll work with the throat so that we're more creative, especially these days that we need that creativity and that uh, originality since everything is changing. And then uh, we'll work with some money mantra so that you have some more money flowing into your life. There's mantras for anything, it's just about getting into that state of mind where you take advantage of uh, possibilities. So that will be next week, we'll do our cleansing, we'll do our grounding, we'll do our mantras. Uh, if you have any special requests, then I can uh, see what I can do. Again, everything I share is because of my teachers, everything I've learned through yoga and through uh, well, self-development too, like journaling and everything. What's important is to stay healthy, to stay strong, especially these days. You don't want to need to go to the hospital. There's not, um, it's not a, going to be a nice experience. It's not going to be, uh, well, it's not going to be that accessible. So it's important to stay safe, to stay sane, to stay strong. Again, if you have something in specific you want to work on, we can work on that. Tomorrow we have beginner's yoga. It doesn't mean that it's easy. It means that it's basic and simple. But we will do different... Um, we will concentrate on pelvic floor and uh, lower belly. So deep core muscles. So it's important for people to have that in their practice, whether you're beginners or whether you're more advanced. Other than that, um, I'm open to your suggestions. From Monday onwards, the schedule is still on, so you can find the different classes I do through my website, thecypriotyogi.com. And if you have anything else, I'm open to your comments, questions, and uh, contributions.